I'm Marty Stauffer. Ground squirrels are some of our most prolific creatures. Adapted to nearly every habitat in North America, they're plucky, lively, and entertaining. And while they often come into conflict with humans, they provide a vital link in nature's food chain. Without ground squirrels, a whole variety of predators, from ferrets to foxes to grizzly bears, would find their dinner tables empty. Join me as we learn why ground squirrels are much more than just little varmints. This is a ground squirrel. There are about 50 squirrel species in North America, so it can get confusing. A least chipmunk feeds near a golden mantled ground squirrel. Both are squirrels, but the sometimes arboreal chipmunk is not a ground squirrel. True ground squirrels, like this 13 lined, live on and under the ground. But this too can lead to confusion. A pocket gopher is also a ground dwelling rodent, active day and night but it's not a ground squirrel. And ground squirrels are not, as commonly called, gophers. Ground squirrels are diurnal, active only during the day. As autumn days shorten, ground squirrels get ready to take a very long nap. They collect soft, dry grasses for a cozy nest and stock up on the summer's bounty of seeds for snacking. Then they prepare to settle into their burrows to hibernate through the long, cold winter. The Brooks Range of northern Alaska is home to the world's champion hibernator not just of ground squirrels, but of all mammals. The Arctic ground squirrel's body temperature actually drops below freezing when it hibernates. At the University of Alaska, scientists are studying what makes the Arctic ground squirrel tick. Here's 9309. What was his body temperature when you took him out? Uh, let's see. He's at minus one Celsius. So he's a degree below freezing. How long has he been hibernating? About 15 days. Wonder which bout he's in. It's probably about the third bout of hibernation about to arouse. Well, why don't we go ahead and record the arousal? I think he's probably at this midpoint in the hibernation season. So his body temperature has gone from high levels in the fall down into these bouts of torpor, all the way down to below freezing, the lowest temperature ever measured in a hibernator. But he's always returning back up to these high body temperatures during the arousals, and that's what he's about to do now. Surprisingly, they rouse because they need to sleep. And to sleep, they must get their brain and body temperature up to normal. Changes in blood chemistry allow the squirrels to drop below freezing 
without ice forming in blood and tissue, and then to rouse again. A sophisticated body clock tells the squirrels when winter is over, and they head for the surface. The squirrels emerge from their burrows early in April. Males appear first, followed by females a week or so later. They weigh only half of what they weighed when they entered hibernation. April in Alaska is still wintry, and there's not much available food for any animals. Hibernation is not the only interest of scientists at the University of Alaska's Arctic Research Institute. As winter hibernation ends, a minute tag is attached to each individual so they can be identified. Additionally, paint markings make for easier recognition in the field. Once they're released, studies attempt to determine mating and feeding habits, patterns of activity and sleep, and relationships with other species. One of the fascinating things we've learned is that females are only fertile one day a year. And it's important that they do breed, since they are prey for many predators. The massive grizzly bear is one species for which the squirrels must be especially alert. Bears catch most squirrels in summer when the tundra is soft and easier to dig and when there is an abundance of young, inexperienced animals. A significant percentage of a bear's diet is composed of ground squirrels. In Alaska, an adult bear will catch about 200 squirrels per year. It's not always an easy meal. Bears are only successful in about 15% of their digs, which makes for happy ground squirrels. The unlucky ones provide the bears with a food source high in fat and protein. Over millennia of human presence in the Arctic, parka squirrels, as they are also called, became a vital part of Eskimo life. In some areas, they remain so today. <laughs> the ancient bond between people and animals is still important. I think only few ladies make this kind of parky. Uh, mm -hmm. These are from squirrel. Skin. What I do right now is same kind of these skins. They using use long ago from reindeer lakes for sewing. We're still in Stone Age, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some parts. Shishmaref Island lies off the northwest coast of Alaska, just below the Arctic Circle. Many people here wear a warm squirrel parka when they tend their ice fishing holes. The art of making squirrel parkas is dying out as fewer native peoples live traditional lives. Two thousand miles south, on the Dakota prairies, 
Richardson's ground squirrels make their home. They also hibernate and emerge in early February. After catching up on food requirements, they begin to prepare for the next generation. Born in May, after a 28-day gestation period, these day-old babies are typical of newborn ground squirrels, blind, deaf, hairless, and completely dependent on their mother. They weigh less than one ounce. In just 10 days, they have fur and the incisor teeth characteristic of all rodents, but their eyelids are still closed. The young grow quickly. At 20 days, they can see and begin exploring their underground nursery. At 30 days, they look much like adults and begin eating solid food. Before long, it's time to leave the safety of the burrow. The month-old young look out on a dangerous new world, but it's also beautiful. The youngsters are caught between curiosity and caution. Hunters are all around. Quickly, the young learn to imitate their watchful mother. It's a warm June day on the grasslands. The young of predator and prey alike take time out to play. Nesting Willet is alert. Richardsons eat eggs, as well as insects, small birds, other mammals, reptiles, and plants. The red fox is one of their main predators. Not that the Richardsons are easy prey. The fox is patient and surprises an unwary young squirrel. The Richardson's plays an important role on the prairie as it spreads seeds, controls insects, and feeds predators. On human playgrounds, ground squirrels are seen as a nuisance. They are often eliminated. In many areas, the solution has been the indiscriminate poisoning of ground squirrels in their burrows. 
perhaps it's merely ignorance of the squirrel's role in our environment. But this ignorance costs the lives of squirrels and any other animal that might eat the poisoned carcasses. In the shadow of Devil's Tower, a famous wilderness landmark, another ground-dwelling rodent shows just how important these seemingly insignificant creatures can be. Black-tailed prairie dogs. These are the largest of our ground squirrels. They live in huge colonies or towns. In the complex prairie dog society, there are many different personalities. Some are loving. Some are curious. Hmm, who's this? She looks familiar. Whoa, watch it, Buster. Sorry. Some are just fat and happy. And some are grouchy. The prairie grasses make fine nesting material to prepare for the birth of young prairie dogs in March and April. The prairie dog's relationship with grass extends far beyond want of material and user. By harvesting the grass, prairie dogs keep it short. Short new grasses and forbs are sweet, tender, and easy to digest. Not surprisingly then, areas where prairie dogs make their homes draw a rich variety of herbivores to their succulent pastures. Other animals also benefit. These are burrowing owls. They nest in abandoned burrows. They hunt small rodents, lizards, and birds. Rabbits also find abandoned prairie dog burrows a good place to make a home and find a meal. Dwindling populations of black-tailed prairie dogs live in close association with the rarest North American mammal. Black-footed ferrets live exclusively in prairie dog burrows. At night, they ferret out the animal that makes up nearly 100% of their diet. Ferrets have never been numerous. Playful, yes, but not numerous. thrive, the ferrets need to be able to catch prairie dogs. A hungry family waits for mother to bring home breakfast. The very survival of black-footed ferrets is still uncertain. What is certain is that they will not survive without a healthy prairie dog population. It's now summer in Prairie Dog Town, and its many inhabitants thrive on its bounty.
Within the larger colony, prairie dogs live in extended family groups called coteries. At six weeks old, the young emerge from their nursery burrows. Young prairie dogs are suckled and groomed by their mothers and aunts, which also watch for danger. This summer is a wet one. Tunnels and mounds require constant attention. It's messy work. But the living is easy. There's plenty of time for play. Even mom joins in. An adult signals danger. This is called plinking and is considered a sport by some. To the ignorant, these vital animals are just little varmints. The Sonora Desert of Arizona provides habitat for two ground squirrel species. Antelope squirrels have foraged in this desert terrain for millennia, unlike cardinals, which are relative newcomers. One of the smaller ground squirrel species, the antelope harvests the fruit of prickly pear cacti, a rather sticky situation requiring good balance. A larger cousin is the round-tailed ground squirrel. Both species have wildly fluctuating numbers. They feed a broad range of predators, like coyotes, foxes, ringtails, weasels, golden eagles, and the resourceful Harris hawk. Alertness to potential danger is essential even when working hard to gather bulky nesting materials. Who knows what one might meet on the journey home? Desert terrain filled with spiky cacti and brush is no easy place to hunt. Even its long legs don't give an automatic advantage to the hawk. The hawk tries to spook the squirrel with high-pitched calls. But this antelope ground squirrel waits it out. A nearby round tail is not so wise.
In this desert wilderness, natural balance is maintained. A healthy squirrel population thrives, even as it supports a majestic predator. Ground squirrels are invaluable to our ecosystems. They turn plants into fertilizer, control the spread of weeds, aerate the soil, distribute seeds, and feed countless predators. Not to mention that they're cute and fun to watch. They have endured despite aggressive and even frenzied assaults by humans. The indiscriminate poisoning of prairie dogs and other species continues to this day. Before we wage war against ground squirrels, why not weigh the negatives against the positives? Maybe we'll all decide that they're much more than just little varmints. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.